Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. This tutorial we are going to do super cute little wintry dressed animals and these are going to be the cutest gifts that you ever could give. So we're going to be using two brushes for today's tutorial. I have a medium sized pointed brush and a small detail brush. I'm going to get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. I'm going to start with these colors for my background. So I have a fair amount of white, probably don't need quite that much. Uh, some black, I have a nice vibrant blue, bright orange, uh, burnt sienna type warm brown, and then I have this phthalo green, which is like a blue green. All right, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to start with my penguin face. I think I'm going to make this one my penguin face. You got to decide which way is up here. And we're going to start with some white and our detail brush. And we're going to create a heart and the heart is going to be the face of our penguin we want to go pretty far up maybe about a third of the way up here on our little wood round we want to have a good sized heart here to get ourselves started with this shape and to give ourselves a lot of space here to put his cute little eyes and cheeks and nose. All right, bringing that a little bit further out. And then we're gonna fill that in in just a second. But for now, I'd like to kind of get these shapes blocked out. So I'm gonna use that same tiny brush and some black. And then I'm going to do a circle that comes up and all the way around the other side, okay? And this circle is pretty much taking up most of your ornament. All right, and then I think I'm gonna grab my medium sized brush for a little bit of filling in. You can certainly use the smaller brush if that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable, okay? So just downgrade brush sizes if you'd like a little bit more control or upgrade brush sizes if you'd like things to go quicker. Oh, I forgot to mention too, there is a full materials list in the description box below if you'd like to see like what types of paints and brushes that I recommend. All right, and I'm gonna be filling that white all the way until the sort of flat part of my wood stops, not onto like the little bark part, but that's just if you're painting on these same kind of wood rounds. And if that's what you want to do, you can certainly paint the whole face too. I just think it looks nice with a little wood frame. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna rinse the white out of my brush. And I'll come in with some black and just fill in that top space. A little bit of water always helps the acrylic paint go nice and smooth. And in some of those smaller areas, I'll probably downgrade my brush size so that I can have a little bit more control. However, we wanna have a pretty clean line on the outside here and then also where it meets the white. I'm using enough paint for a full size painting today but I don't need it. It's all right. I always waste a little bit of paint it seems but don't let that stress you out. It's kind of like the cooking. I had a chef friend just say, you know, sometimes you're gonna waste a little bit of food. And that used to always drive me crazy and it made me afraid to cook. So don't be afraid to use a little bit too much paint on your palette. It's all right. You can forgive yourself. A little bit of water. So now I've switched to my smaller detail brush just to get those nice details all filled in there and just bring that black along the side here. Nice clean line. 
as clean as possible. A nice clean line on the outside. We are being dainty and delicate today. All right. Trying to make it somewhat as circular as possible. It's always tricky. to get that perfect circle, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It can certainly be a little imperfect, that's all right. These are hand-painted, which your friends are gonna love, your family. And so they're gonna expect a little bit of that homemade look, right? Oh, it's a it's not perfectly round. All right, looking good. All right, and then just bringing that here along the side as well. Trying to get it somewhat symmetrical here. Like so, and then a little point, nice and clean. Okay, looks good. Very cute. Okay, I'm gonna do now the background color for this ornament. And the hard part is actually really over because we got all of our shapes sorted out now. So I'm gonna grab some white and my medium sized brush again and mix it in with some of that gorgeous phalo green, my favorite color. And I'm going to do the background with that beautiful sort of winter green color. I'm bringing that right next to the black. And in the same way, I think I'll probably use my detail brush along the outside edges just to clean things up even more. Make it nice and tidy. The devil is in the details. Every little brush stroke here, you wanna be nice and smooth and light. Okay. I'm going to bring in that small brush again, switching back and forth a lot today. A little bit of water in that paint, but not too much, you'll get drips. That's the worst. Okay, just bringing that teal all the way down. Nice clean edge. Like so. Okay. Just love that natural wood slice shape. Really makes you appreciate the tree to get up close and personal and paint right on top of it. <laughs> okay, just bringing that same teal down on the other side, home stretch here for the first layer of our penguin. It's gonna be so cute. Okay, lovely. Gonna put that aside and switch her out for my other wood round. All right. So we are going to now do the first layer of our little cute kitty cat. I'm gonna paint a orange cat today. No particular reason. I mean, I am redheaded, so perhaps that's why I chose to do a redheaded kitty cat. Um, but let's see. Actually, let's start with our our smallest brush here because we're going to do just a little bit of a sketch first. Um, we're going to again like situate your wood round so that you have what you want to have facing up, so that you can work here 
kind of face to face with your little kitty. And we're gonna do a white circle coming up here from the bottom, about the same size as the circle that we have for our penguin, okay? They are meant to be sort of matching, circular headed, cute animals. Okay, and I'm bringing that white all the way around to the other side until I have this nice circle here. And I'm going to do the bottom half of his cute little face white, and the top half orange. My little line of separation here is gonna be a little swoop, little two curve brush strokes that come up to me. And that's probably a little bit lower than halfway here. Okay, and then in the same way, you're welcome to use that medium sized brush again, or you can just stick with the small brush the whole time, that's okay too. I'm gonna grab some orange. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that warm brown into it and a fair amount of white. And I'll get that adorable ginger cat color. A little bit more brown there. Okay, that's looking really good. Kind of like a sherbet. Very cute. And I'm going to bring this orange color in the top part of that circle. And you wanna come out and cover that white sketch line completely. No white sketch line. But then down here, you just wanna meet the line. So meeting the line here at the bottom, overlapping the top line. overlap and then just have it meet and then just filling in that top space with that orange so cute very nice and I'm gonna fill in now the bottom part with white, again, very similar to our little penguin guy as well. They are perhaps distant cousins. In the animal tree, well, not really, but maybe they're pen pals. Are penguins in Antarctica or the Arctic? Pretty sure it's Antarctica. Pretty sure they're down south because I remember going up to Alaska and being pretty close to the North Pole and there was not penguins. So we're almost guaranteed that they're on the South Pole. There is polar bears up north though. That always frightened me a bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use my small brush again. And before I fill in the background here, I'm gonna create some cutie little ears for my cat. And we're gonna kind of kind of exaggerate these shapes to be more cartoon-like. So we're gonna have the cat's ears like way on the side of his head, like so, and pretty small. That's what's gonna make it look so cute and cartoon-like. <laughs> okay, looking great. And now I'm gonna fill in that background with some blue. Take this blue and mix it with a little bit of black. I'm gonna get a gorgeous navy blue. Like so you can sneak in a little bit of white too if you want it to look a li little bit more like kind of denim colored. And we're just very carefully going to take that color right alongside our cat shape. Probably need to use my small brush for the smaller areas. Mix up a little bit more here. A little bit more blue. I'll make sure it's the right color. It's 
a little bit lighter, but that's okay. Okay, just switching my brush again, back to that small brush for the final touches of the first layer of our cat. I got a drip there onto my wood. You gotta be careful with that. But luckily, it's not bled into anything, so we'll just kinda go back to that area in a moment. For now, I don't wanna push that water around, so I'm just gonna come right up here. For some reason, this tiny brush is always like the drip brush, the drip master. Okay, and then I'll come back there in just a second to clean that up. You can see the water kind of oozing, but luckily I'm on my wood surface here rather than a canvas today. So it's just gonna soak right into that wood and we'll just come right back and touch it up. These little animals are always deceivingly tricky. You really gotta be careful with your brush control when it comes to little characters. Being really careful around those cute little ears. We're actually using complementary colors here with our blue and our orange next to each other. And in the penguin, they'll be red and green next to each other, but it's the sort of aqua green. So those are pleasing, complementary color compositions. If you'd like to learn more about color compositions and also how to blend colors, I have a course on that called Color Theory 101. It will take you through how to create a color wheel and how to mix colors and how to choose color combinations like these ones today. If you'd like to take your art to the next level, and start being really comfortable with blending up certain colors on your art. I just flattened his ears, so that'd be terrible. Okay, <laughs> there, that looks a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and let this layer dry, and then we're gonna come back and add all our final touches. So I'll see everyone in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back artists. We have dry backgrounds and I also got some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have some more black and white and then just a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange and a fair amount of red. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Now I think I'm going to actually finish my little penguin first, super cute. I'm gonna use my small brush now. And let's go ahead and start by adding some adorable little earmuffs. So the earmuffs are going to go kind of more towards the top part of the head. Very high ears here on our penguins. <laughs> Just like so, we're gonna do two little ovals on either side. Just like so, very, very simple. Just with red by itself in that small detail brush. Okay. Two little ovals and then just a line to connect the two. Right along top of the head. Nice and slow and steady and even. All about the details today. So cute. Okay, that looks really good. Just like so. Little earmuffs, so cute. Okay, I'm just gonna finesse these little ovals a little bit more. Don't want them too small. You want a little bit of space in there. 
to do a nice highlight. There we go. Very cute. All right, let's go ahead and jump down to the face now. And we're going to do, let's do the eyes first, actually. That's gonna give us a little bit of placement here. So rinsed my brush. I'm gonna be going in with black by itself for two little button eyes. And we're gonna do those right about here on either side. So a little bit more closer to center than right beneath the uh, curves of our heart shape here. So a little bit more towards the center than that. We're gonna do a circular of black dots as we can. Okay, then we're gonna let that dry for just a second. Okay, I'm gonna do a cute little nose now with a yellow orange. I'm gonna mix my yellow and my orange together. I'm gonna do a little penguin nose with two curved lines and then a little half circle on top, like so. So curved on the top and then curved inwards here below for the beak. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and white and do a quick highlight in there as well. Just a little bit, like so. Okay, so cute. Those eyes are a little bit closer together than my last one because my head's a little smaller, but that's all right. Every time you do one of these, they're gonna look different, which is kind of the fun part of doing these for gifts because they'll all look unique. Okay, mixed up now a little bit of pink. I'm just gonna do two cute little cheeks, little rosy cheeks on either side here. <laughs> so cute. All right, now just a few final touches with some white. So rinsed my brush again. Gonna add a cute little shine mark in each of these eyes, like so. Gonna take a curve line around the earmuffs. And at the top part, it's okay if it blends to pink a little bit. So cute. And then I'm gonna add a couple snowflakes just as my little final touch here. So I'm just gonna do little plus signs with little lines in between for a few, maybe just one or two like that. Like so, little tiny snowflakes. And then a few just dots of white as well for a little snow flurry all around our adorable little penguin who is now complete. Look at that. So cute. Love it. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead now and finish off our cute little cat. And we're gonna have the cutest little pair that you ever did see. All right, we're gonna go right back into the cat shape here. We're going to create a little Santa hat. So I'm gonna do two little curved lines sitting right on top of the ear. And then I'm gonna meet those lines and then do another parallel line to create the white furry uh, part of that Santa hat. Okay, just like so. And then just filling that in with the white. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and from the top part here, I'm gonna have a little triangle. And then this is gonna pull through your red a little bit or your, through your white a little bit, so be careful. But we're gonna bring a curved line down like so, which is going to be sort of like a triangular shape from the center of the hat, like so. Okay, so then you have this triangle shape and then you have another 
triangular shape coming down like so and then kind of off to the side so that we have space to do a little snowball, a little fur ball on the bottom of that hat. So cute. Okay, bringing that up to pretty much the very tip top of my little composition here. That's all right. A little bit wider on this side. I think you will see a little peekaboo of that white over there still. Just like so. So cute. The little uh, bottom half of my cat's face sort of looks like a little Santa beard right now. And I didn't even notice that when I was first doing these. And I love that. Okay, I'm going to do a little round circle here for that little fur ball pom-pom at the end of the Santa hat. Okay, looking really good. Real quick before we move on, I'd like to take a little bit of gray. So just black and white together. I'm gonna do a quick little curved line in there. And then I'm gonna make a quick dark red. So that's black and red. I'm gonna do a few lines through that hat just to make it look like it has some texture there. Okay, maybe you went a little overboard. You can just add some more red right back on top. So just a tiny, tiny little step and then maybe a little bit of gray in the hat as well. But again, you can always cover that with the color from behind if you need to. Okay, rinsing my brush again. Little hat is looking cute, cute, cute. Okay, let's do some texture on our little kitty's face. So we're gonna take some orange, gonna add just a tiny bit of black into that orange and create a darker orange. I think I'll grab some red in there too, just so that it doesn't look greenish. Okay, I'm gonna come into the little ears and do a little Darker orangish brown triangle, like so. Little tiny details. And I'm gonna have a few little tiger stripes coming down here from the top, just like so. So cute. Rinsing my brush now. And I'm going to take some gray into the white area of the fur of this little kitty. Just a little bit of gray, a little bit darker. Coming off the little cheek areas. One, two, three, and then two in between. Just like so. Okay, and then we'll do the cute little face. So I'm gonna start with the nose. Just gonna be working with black here. And the nose, you're gonna have an adorable little triangle right at the peak of those two curved lines. All right. Just like so. And then a little straight line down here. And I'm gonna do a cute little smile. <laughs> and for the eyes, rather than doing a circular eye, I'm doing this kind of like scrunched face kitty. Cause I was thinking like, you know, cats don't always like to have things on their head. So you put a little Santa hat on him just for a second to take a cute picture. And his little face is scrunching cause he doesn't like it. But he's also smiling, you know, because he appeases you, as our pets do. <laughs> That's how much thought goes into these things. <laughs> okay, super cute. They look a little bit different than my original, but I love them just as much. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. And if you painted along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club. That's designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or from their own studios and imaginations. There's a link to join that in the description box below as well. 
Let me know if you liked the ornaments or if you'd like to see some more paintings. More paintings coming for everyone in the next coming weeks. So happy holiday, happy almost Thanksgiving, and until next time, stay creative.